Hello everyone and welcome back to the first book tuck of 2022. And so this is one that I actually got as a Yule gift this year. So I was a little hesitant because I did not get to do my research on it, nor did I get to flip through it if I was buying it locally, which we ended up buying this locally. I went into this completely and utterly blind. I did not look at reviews of it. I have nothing to base it off of. Modern Witch by Devin Hunter. I unwrapped it. I thought the cover was pretty. And then I flipped through it and I got a little nervous because the pages are really, really loud for a book. In the Patreon discussion, we'll go over a lot of why I don't like that, but that's for later. So I'm trying not to complain too much in this following year, trying to pull back a little bit on complaining. So this review might be very short. I'm gonna try and put a positive spin on a lot of it, but I'm gonna be real, this is not a book I would recommend. I should preface, this is a book that I would recommend to a very specific set of people. So the first group of people I would recommend this book to is if you have a friend or a family member who's like, hey, this witchcraft thing, what's that all about? This is a really good book to give them a genuine idea of what a witch does. It talks a little bit about the basics, but not going into too much detail. And it also goes into enough detail of like how spell work actually goes so that they have an actual realistic idea of what you're doing when you're burning a bunch of incense and gathering crystals and herbs and different things in your bedroom. It gives them a pretty good idea of what to expect. If you are a new witch, but not like beginner beginner, but within your first year or two of really hardcore studying, this would be a good book. Is it the first book I would say to pick up? Definitely no. Is it something a seasoned witch would want to pick up? Also no. So it's somewhere between the two that it's perfect. Because again, it covers the basics, but not very in depth. So it gives you some ideas, especially for newer witches that are just starting to kind of branch out into trying different spell things and different ways to use herbs and crystals and different ways a spell could go. It gives you a lot of ideas. However, a seasoned witch, I feel like you might, much like me, be like, wow, I feel like I've been reading this before. So you might not enjoy it. And a new witch, I feel like it's so much information with so little explanation that you're just gonna get lost. That's why I've decided like a healthy medium is probably somewhere in year one to year two of being a witch, where you've read a lot of the beginning, beginning books about like the history of witchcraft and where it is now, and some of the beginner basic stuff energy work, elemental, spirits, all of that jazz. It, you know, you're starting to dabble a little bit into maybe divination or going a little deeper into crystal or herb magic, but you're still kind of new and just kind of feeling it out. Good book to kind of get a more broad idea of some stuff to do. I would also say if you love magazine style books, you would love this. What I mean by that is twofold. One, the writing style. It is a new style that I feel like it's begun in the past few years, and I thought it would go away, and it's not. But it's this trendy, like we're buddies, and it's super casual, and it reads like the script of a podcast. To be fair, the author does host a podcast, so it makes sense that their writing style is gonna mimic that, much like if you weren't a fan of Kellyanne's like talking style in her videos and you picked up Rebel Witch, you aren't gonna like it because it sounds just like a script for her videos. Same thing. I just, I couldn't get into it. A lot of these books have that very, almost like a Buzzfeed kind of feel to it. And I don't love it. It's been around for so many things that I've had to read, not just witchy wise for so long now. It's overly done. There's nothing unique about the story, so I personally get very bored with that writing style. Other people, they might really love it. The way I've been comparing this, and I've seen other people do this a bit too, is the new writing style is what people probably around my age, but in like the 90s, were complaining about. Like 90s, early 2000s-ish, where it was the fluffy bunny writing, and everyone was like, oh my God, it's all the same. And blah, blah, blah. Those people? I'm now those people for the modern books and I don't know how to process that, <laughs> but it's probably the same thing. A lot of people in their probably mid 20s, 30s, in the 90s, did not love that writing style. And now me, as mid 20s, 
really hate this writing style that we've got going on now. I wouldn't say it's necessarily Fluffy Bunny. I just feel like trendy is the appropriate term. I don't know if there's a different term associated with it, but it's, it reminds me of like a social media post. But again, if you love that style, you will love it. So the second part of why it feels like a magazine is the formatting. Now, this is the first time I have realized I am in fact an adult. I grew up and I am no longer a child because at one point in my life, I would have loved having all of the visual stuff going on. So many pretty fun colors and pictures and stuff, but now I hate it a lot. It was so distracting from the book. A lot of it, it felt like it was honestly just filler to make this book thick because, I mean, did we really need two pages for the intro to a chapter every time? And not just that, I could give some credit for that one. But then you have so many, 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 many pages that are like this. You've got just solid photo and a little blob of text. Some are these little bit bigger ones, others it's a few words, maybe a sentence. For example, here's one. So you've got this photo and then this font. Now I hate this font. It, and again, this is a lot of a me problem to keep in mind, but I struggled to switch from the normal font that you've been reading to, to that. And it was just super jarring and I'd have to kind of, you couldn't just skim read it, maybe some people can, I couldn't, because we don't write in cursive very much anymore, but it is just, it was jarring constantly to have the swirly that you'd have to sit there and be like, okay, how do I, how, what, what's the sentence? Only to about halfway through the book realize it didn't matter, I didn't need to read it, it was literally a sentence from the previous page every single time. There was no new information, no reason for it being there at all. Just a pretty picture that could have been an Instagram post with the sentence from the previous page. It got obnoxious. It was like, wow, can you tell me that you don't have enough words to make a thick book without telling me that you don't have enough words to make a thick book? Because that's what it felt like. And I know the author did it on purpose. They wanted to have a visually stimulating book, I guess. I hated it. It was so distracting. I just wanted to sit and read a book. This is not a book that you can just sit and read. It was so distracting. And again, it's a me problem, but I don't know if other readers will feel the same. The other one is 100% a me problem, but really was distracting on the same topic of formatting, which is these. I hate these. I hate them. I hate them so much. It is one of my biggest writing pet peeves of all times. If I see it on like, I know a lot of websites use that. They pull out a quote and make it really big so you really focus on it. But listen, I'm gonna read the whole thing. It's fine. You don't need to pull it out so then I have to read it twice. <sighs> but they didn't do that. They just made this text different and I hate it. I hate it so much. It's fine to format it a little differently, to like have your list of whatever, but you could just do it like every other book does, where it's just italicized for like the list of herbs or deities or whatever. Doesn't need to be in a bubble. So with that all in mind, the main takeaway from this book that I have gotten is again, it's a book for a very specific audience. Looking at other reviews, that don't love this book, we're all kind of on the same page in general, that it's information that's already been said. There is nothing new, and I've seen a few that have said to just go read the older books, and like one on Amazon said to just pick up a Penzac book because it's the same information, and the author is just rewording it and summarizing these older works, and just kind of putting a bow on top. And not gonna lie, that is kind of what it feels like. It's really the exact same information, just regurgitated. And I mean, it, I'm glad that they did put in their references and I, you know, it might be worth looking into some of those references. But I mean, I did read through this and I was thinking and just comparing it to Inner Temple up there that I'm reading. And as far as beginner books go, I, I picked that one over this because it covers the information in far more detail and granted, his books 
it's like what a six plus book series to get through all of his beginner witchcraft stuff but it goes into so much detail that this book just kind of skims the surface for and I again we compared it earlier in this video this is the new version of the fluffy teenage witch books and some older witches will be fine with that style and they like that and that's good for them and if you like it fabulous I'm glad you found a resource that works for you and you know it, it's not all bad there was a few things that I did like in this book not a lot but there was a few and I will be talking about that on the Patreon extended discussion. So if you want to hear the exact quotes of different things, good and bad, that I've pulled from this book, I definitely recommend you go check it out. It will be available at the same time as this video. So anywho, that is going to be it for this video. Would I buy it? No. Am I going to get rid of it? No. I have a collection of books that I don't like that are still on my bookshelf because at least I have a pretty library and the spines of the books are pretty. So anyways, that is going to be it for this discussion and I will see you guys soon for another one. I have a number of books that we'll be going through this year so stay tuned for those and of course I'll still have my usual uploads on Fridays. These are just going to be kind of sporadically uploaded as I finish books this year so yeah, until next time, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all soon.